Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 94 of Court of Swords. Max will be joining us soon, I'm assuming. But if not, it's fine as well. We'll just go on another week without him. Uh, <laughs> we're doing the show Monday because I'm going on vacation tomorrow. Uh, so shout out to everyone for moving uh, 24 hours prior. Um, so that's why a lot of you in, in chat are wondering why we're doing the show today. There's There you go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, but let's play catch up with everyone, and then we'll jump into the show. Uh, Zeke. I don't know why it's it still has question marks here on our names. I'll fix that. But <laughs> what uh, right. what's been going on the past week? How you been? Oh, I've been good. Yeah, um, got to do uh, speaking like this is a, a great place to talk about it. But I did a uh, the RPG sports four on four arena D and D five E battle. Oh, nice on uh, oh, Saturday. Really? Yeah, how's that? It was great. Win? It was a lot of fun. We, uh, we did actually. Um, basically, uh, this, well. this. I know you. you Dan, totally Dan and did. Dan and I are Dan and I are both very proud of you. <laughs> yes, very proud. <laughs> However, uh, so this. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. What? I said our son is so grown up. Mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm. Our boy. <laughs> true. Um, but no, sa- sadly, the thing is. I didn't use like a lot of the skills that I learned from being in this group because it's, it's, there's almost no RP. It's just like right. they hand you, they give you templates of, I don't know how many characters, like 15 characters and they try and balance them out with skills. They're all level four. So you got a range of different classes, uh, uh, bards, paladins, like all, all the classes are represented. Um, and you do a draft, basically. So you take uh, the first round is is the ban round, which means you eliminate characters so they can't, so no one can play them. Um, uh, the other team is is kind of what you're preventing uh, them from getting like a character that goes well, or someone plays them really well, or, or is really skilled at this and that or the other thing. Yeah. But you do that ban round, two pick rounds, another ban round, and then another two pick rounds, and uh, you take your template characters and you're in like just like a roll 20 like like big old room and there's like little obstacles or some potions like laid out throughout the room and you just like go and you fight them as best you can. I mean, and there's barely any room for RP, which is funny because um, <laughs> Sour Kool Aid Show, my my one of my closest and best friends, DP, <laughs> is such a lovable guy and. <laughs> I don't want to spoil anything, but first thing out of the gate, if you just want to watch like the first, I don't know, 20 minutes of the battle, you'll understand why I'm laughing right now because he tries things that I would try, but I tried in the practice round to ask about and be like, okay, what about, can I use skills? Can I use like, I don't know, intimidation on them? And they're like, yeah, maybe shy away from that kind of stuff because it's more about just, you know, just like action, action, action. I was like, okay, I understand yeah. the show and stuff like that. I mean, I get that. There's a place for that. I don't mind. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, so, of course, <laughs> the first one of the first things DP does is one, try to use one of those skills. And it is just hilarious. And I even have a new, I have an emote now based on my facial expression during that <laughs> little, little, uh, <laughs> Uh, situation where I was like, um, what are you doing, bud? What, what, what what's going on here? <laughs> like just trying to figure out like, it's why a, are you doing what you're doing? Yeah. That's a good thinking about, I like it. <laughs> yeah. It's good stuff. But, uh, the first round we got just crushed. Uh, it was team. Our team is team beholder and their team to And they just whooped our asses. Like that doesn't feel like, like a fair matchup. I come like well, I know, Beholder, I know. Just the like Beholders names, are though. way cooler, but those are terrible team names. Like the Trask is literally the strongest monster in the whole game, and they're like, you can be team. Right. I don't know, Kobold or Ogre, even. And they're like, oh, who's our enemies? <laughs> oh, Team Trask. Yeah. But, I mean, Chicago Bears versus like the Philadelphia Eagles. You know, it's like who's gonna win bears, in the fight, really? But bears, but bears and eagles are both super cool animals. Like a Trask. Is like it'd be like if there was a basketball team called like the San Francisco Deities, or like <laughs> the, you know, like oh, who do you play for? Oh, the Chicago God. 
Wait, what? Yeah, like yeah Christ, God, the God. So yeah. Our yeah, yeah, our 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 mascot is Jesus Christ, fucking sky dunking. So <laughs> yeah. I don't know what you are, but we win, I guess. Yeah, I feel like you're focusing on the wrong thing here. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's probably true. Listen, uh, Adam's no, just thinking just, branding. Just, just the team is. names. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we went. Uh, we got trounced the first round, and then the second round we got a, We got better picks. We kind of understood the system a little better and we won the second round and then the third round boy did we do some mean cheap bad shit and to and win all within the rules all within the rules <laughs> but still, like it, it definitely i don't think it was in the spirit of the event is but the I will, i'll let time? you watch the vod like yes the, I- that's the worst part about it is the rounds are time oh my god you that's can my see dream my, my first time out it was it was awful because I was like, okay, can I see this? Can I do this? And then they were like, beep, 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 beep. It's like, oh, the fucking time is up. I didn't even do anything. Okay, I guess I don't do anything. <laughs> like, you got to have your, oh. your action, your, your move action, your, your attack action, and your bonus action, like, set it's so, or malleable. It's so weird. It's so uh, weird because, like, competitive, competitive D&D is, like, a time-honored tradition, but it's players versus the adventure, right? It's like, can you beat, it's like speed running something. Can you beat the adventure quickly and most efficiently? But like d d is not built for PVP. Like player groups are not balanced against one another. Like if you pick the wrong classes, you have just fucked your whole team up. Right. Like it's, yeah, it's so weird. It's a weird choice. Like I could see there being like a redo of 5e where it was built to be like players versus players, but the classes are heinously unbalanced. And if yeah. you didn't know that going in, like if there was a Beastmaster Ranger in that list and someone picked it, it'd be like, cool, well, our team loses. It's a 3v4, I guess. Like it's, yeah, it's so weird. Well, yeah. with I think with the, with the drafting system, it makes it a little bit better because you can ban OP play, o, OP characters like the first round. So if you mm-hmm. think someone is just completely overpowered, you can ban them right away, and no one, no one gets them. Right, like I think circle that, of the was, circle of the moon druid. If it's out there and you can't take it, you just are like, nope. Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. Makes sense. If you if you huh. have the first, if you have the first ban, like your team has the first ban, you have to pick the one that that you don't want to go against. Or if you're yeah. the second ban, you pick the band that like most benefits what you're going to pick first because you're you're up first to pick next time. So yeah, it's it, there's a lot of there's actually kind of a lot of strategy to it, um, and it, it was it was a blast. I had, I had a lot of fun doing it, um, and winning always feels good. Yeah, of course. What <laughs> yes, uh, that's what, the most important part. A lot of people in chat are asking, "What's the name of it again?" So they can Google and watch the vods. Twitch.tv slash RPG Sports. RPG Sports. All right, there you go. Yep. Go check it out. The vods are up. They didn't go with right now. RPG Esports or R Sports. They went with sports. Our sports. <laughs> I could have well, gone. We, yeah. need, we need more. We need more confusing acronyms that no one knows how to spell or pronounce. Yeah, we need. We need a new tabletop sport acronym. We, we'll work mm-hmm. on that. We'll oh, and also it. one of the things I, I, I failed to mention is that there's a draft every round. So you play the best two out of three. So if you saw someone perform like really good in the previous round, you're like, we got to either get them or get rid of them immediately because we didn't know how powerful this character was oh uh, huh yeah that kind of shit yeah yeah Might have, I'm, yeah I'm I, I, yeah, it can, yeah it's such a weird it's such a weird thing because yeah like if you if you play the draft right it's like the rest of the game almost doesn't matter because like spell choice and character build are a huge deal and the fact that they're given to you rather than crafted is like an interesting choice like you're not allowed to bring a character to the table Huh. Right. Yeah, but I mean, weird. that's the only way they can keep it like fair for, for random choices and stuff like that. But also, yeah, yeah. the die roll really, they, they the die rolls I mean, really the, matter. The chaos, the, the yeah, yeah. The chaos plateau is the chaos plateau is a nightmare, right? Like the, the fact that you're rolling a D20 and adding at fourth level, like there, there are moments where it doesn't matter if you're skilled too, I guess, where you could just be like, cool, I got another four. Here we go. I mean, yeah. we're, shit, we're still experiencing that at level 10. So. Yeah. yeah well, and I like I had to kind of stop myself a few times because I'm used to playing with higher level characters than level four. So I was yeah. like, no, no, no. The, the, the barbarian can move 40 feet. And like, no, I went, oh, oh, right. I'm just used to like <laughs> just playing a tiny <laughs> baby. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> well, cool. That sounds fun. Well, uh, we'll have to. Yeah. Have to and we're, our next match is December first. Nice, nice. How many teams are in this thing? I want to say six. Okay. Because I think the next round is the last of the preliminary. Gotcha. Cool. Yep. Cool. Uh, Mr. Dance Gaming, you've been lost in the Fallout world of West Virginia. Uh, mm -hmm. I've seen your tweets, and also I've watched a bit of your stream where you were uh, at, at the beginning not so into the game, and as you've played more, you seem to start. You seem to be really enjoying it. Yep. Uh, the start of the game is mind-numbingly easy. You're just, just drowning in ammo, stem packs everywhere. It's not until about like level 25 to 30 that the game starts to get like actually a challenge you have to try. Like you, you start running out of ammo and stem packs, and enemies take way more bullets to kill, and you start taking more damage. Yeah, uh, it's about that level where it's like okay, it's finally getting interesting to gameplay wise. Yeah. Um, but the the first twenty levels are just so like okay, I can like just not even look at what I'm shooting at and just talk to chat. It's just so easy. <laughs> <laughs> How long did it take uh, to get to like twenty five or twenty? Uh, it took like a couple days of playing. So it was like fifteen twenty hours. Would say. And that's all soloed, right? I, I think it can be yeah, sped solo. up if you group or something like that. Go into groups, then you, you <laughs> kill things faster. You complete quests faster. So, is But is, it also gets easier because there's more people there killing the same stuff. Sure, that makes sense. What is there a level cap? I've seen people that are in like the 70s. Uh, 50 is the level you stop gaining special points, oh. um, but there is no there's no max level. You, but so you <sighs> basically can get all the perk cards every level you get to still pick a perk card I and when you level you. okay huh all right are you finding uh the lore and stuff interesting yeah there's a lot of good quests in the game that are way better than fallout 4 really um, for me as a player like i'm the type of person that actually like reads the terminals and reads the notes on the desk and stuff yeah most people don't like that kind of thing but for me like it, it plays to my gameplay style of how i play fallout mm. Elder scrolls really well which is just there's a big building. Go see what's inside of it. Find cool things. Makes sense. That's like how I play those type of games. Cool. Cool. Uh, you play anything else or has it been mostly Fallout, strictly Fallout the past week? I uh, did uh, Let's Go Eevee. That was Oh, yeah. How's that new Pokemon trip. game? <laughs> it's, if, if you play Pokemon Yellow, it's pretty much Pokemon Yellow. Yeah. But yeah instead like, of somehow... Yeah. Somehow I saw all of the advertising for this game and missed completely like what the game actually is. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. It's a remake of Pokemon Yellow, but instead of doing any of the fun shit like leveling up your Pokemon and doing battles, it's just Pokemon Go, right? And you throw the... And that's it? Um, is that the game? All the trainer, Help me understand this. All, all the trainer battles are still there, so you still fight okay. with Pokemon. But catching Pokemon is just Pokemon Go. You... You catch, you throw a ball. So you don't, it, you like, don't battle, you don't battle like just rando in the grass Pokemon. No, and catch. in this one, unlike just walking through the grass and getting a random encounter, <laughs> you can see the Pokemon walking around. Yeah. You can see what it is okay. before you. Engage. So, you, and then so if you how catch do you? One, if you catch how do you one, level you up your Pokemon. Oh, okay. Um, there you go. Catching gains experience, and if you catch the same Pokemon again and again, you start getting a multiplier. You get even more Got experience. It. And then if you get it high enough, then you can have a chance to spawn a rare Pokemon or a shiny Pokemon. You care about that right. sort of thing. Interesting. So it's like a okay. hybrid of old Pokemon, new Pokemon, and Pokemon Go. Hmm. Right. Okay. Yeah. That's more interesting than I thought it was. Cool. There are little bits and pieces there that I was missing that made it seem really fucking boring. But uh, that's that's interesting. Okay. I see how it does the hybrid thing now. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. And they have gem battles. So you like you got to go. All the, it's, it's just like Yellow. It's, the only thing they've taken out is the wild Pokemon battles and they replaced that with the Pokemon go gameplay. Hmm. Yeah. Are they telling you to try out Pokemon go at any point in the game? Is that like looped in or nope? Uh, but there <clears throat> is a, you can link your account to ah. the game and I don't know what you do with that, but <laughs> somehow like there's a crossover. I don't know what happened. I don't give a I shit feel like about Nintendo, that. I feel yeah. like Nintendo has that problem a lot where they're like link your Nintendo account. You're like, okay, what does it do? I don't know. Nothing, I guess. You could transfer hey, you're your Pokemon up now. Go Pokemon. You could take the Pokemon for Pokemon Go and transfer it. Yeah, that's what I would imagine. Uh, so, so you take the ones you already have in Go and you can put them in your... 
All right. What voice was that? That was such a good voice. Shut up, Zeke. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. I love it. It's good. Oh, yeah, I know. That's my next character. Hey, guys, what's going on? Hey, I'll be great. <laughs> hey, everybody, it's me. How are you doing? Oh, it's, it's that guy you know. <laughs> Sounds like a well, real... That's my, oddballs, that's my oddballs voice if I ever was on that show. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds, sounds like someone who's like a Gale the Snail kind of a character. Yeah. Like a person. Yeah. Get out of here. Leave. Get out of my room. Yeah. I know. Oh, come I, on. I just wanted to play okay. Jax with you. <laughs> yes. I don't know if it's just that game specific, specifically or it's all Pokemon stuff, but they were sold out at two Best Buys that we went to. So I guess it's doing well. Or it's doing what Pokemon yeah. does and just sells out. Pokemon sells. Like they've released the same game every couple years for 20 years now, and it's. People buy it. And people are like, Pokemon fans are crazy. They just want more and more and more. Dan, how far do you <laughs> think the, the difference between a Pokemon fan is and a Smash fan is? Like, where do you think those people are on the scale, on the spec, not, not on the spectrum, but on a spectrum? <laughs> the spectrum <Careful>. of dorkiness. <laughs> the yeah. spectrum that measures yeah. how dorky people are. Yeah. <laughs> I'd have to run the calculation. I'm not sure. Okay. All right. You get back. Uh, let us know next week. We'll we'll wait for the uh, test results on that. Just go go ask some people. It's got to be close, I would think. It's got to be close. Are you excited mm -hmm. at all for Smash Bros? Are you going to check out the single player stuff in that? No. I'm not a fan of fighting games. I've never <coughs> liked Smash or any other game even, like it. Even if it has like an adventure mode or whatever this new one has? I uh, The adventure mode was just simply playing against bots, which I tried before, <clears> and that's not very fun. Gotcha. Okay. I don't know enough about it to say that it's not just that, so I can't... I don't know. I guess we'll just have to see. I'm sure the game will do just fine uh, without your promotion on your oh, stream. Yeah. <laughs> it'll, it'll sell all kinds of yeah. copies. I saw a uh, news bite saying that it had already broken like pre-sale records for any other Smash uh, game previous, so I'm sure it's going to be yep. the best, the biggest selling game of the year, potentially. Well, actually, no, Red Dead will probably always top that, but It'll do just fine. It'll do just fine. Max, you're back from vacation. How was your cruise? Question mark. Is that where you went? Yeah, I was on a cruise. It was good. It was a lot of fun. What Next uh, question? What cruise line was it? <laughs> I know a lot about cruise by proxy, but I've never actually been on one. It was a uh, Royal Caribbean cruises. cruise. I went on the Brilliance of the Seas for a five night cruise. Uh, okay. Stop was in Cozumel, Mexico, and the Key West, in okay. Florida. So it was pretty cool. It's a nice night, not like super crazy long, long, uh, you know, cruise with like a shit ton of um, stops, which is nice because it was Amanda's first cruise ever. Like I'd, I'd been on cruises before when I was younger uh, with my parents and stuff. It was kind of weird though, because we went on the same ship with the same itinerary, like itinerary, like multiple, multiple times <laughs> after a bit. You think you wouldn't get tired of that, but as a kid, you're just like, same thing. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, it was still fun. I sound like a spoiled little bitch right now, but it's. <laughs> <laughs> it I went on the same um, cruise seven times as a kid. <laughs> well, when you know that there's other cruises that are priced at the same, you know, thing. My parents were just like, whatever. They were like, you know, we. It's like going to a resort. It's you, you don't complain about that. Man, I really just sound like a. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. No, it was fun. It was Amanda's first cruise. So I, I knew that she was going to love it because she's from Florida. She loves the ocean, loves, you know, warm weather and all that shit. So, like, there's no way you're not going to like this. So I went with my parents, uh, my mom and dad, and uh, her. It was super cool. And now we're going on another cruise in, like, two weeks. But that's not one that we booked. That was because of the people that manage my <laughs> shit as far as, like, you know, deals and business stuff. Mm. Doing Wait, that. which? It's a bit. It's one of those, it's one of those business OBG. cruises. <laughs> No, 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 not not which group. What what crew? Because I have friends that are going on cruises. Either I think they leave I tomorrow. It's a carnival. I think it's a carnival cruise. Is it the one on the brand new ship? No. Okay, never mind. You're uh -uh. not going on the same one as. Uh, However, as JP. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of brand new ships on the Royal, on Royal Caribbean. Mm-hmm. Might book another cruise <laughs> in the far flung future. Yeah. <laughs> on the new one, the the Symphony of the Seas. <clears throat> I think I've that's what though. Ever, ever since they announced that, I was like, "Fuck yeah, that seems awesome." I think that's what Scoots going. Scoots is going on like the biggest cruise ship of all time ever it's in the Symphony history of, the of cruise ships. Yeah, it's Symphony of the Seas. I think it's he's going it's on six thousand people if it's at like yeah around full capacity. I don't know. Give if you some perspective. The one I just was on was twenty four hundred. Yeah, it's fucking stupid. And it's huge. still a big ship, like the one that I was just on. 
<clears throat> it's a city so, on the sea. But it's fucking stupid. It's yeah. fucking crazy. Yeah, I could go into detail about like I just watched a 26 minute video of it last night <laughs> a couple nights ago. <laughs> And it didn't even feel like a long video because it's just like, they're like, and here's this thing. Look, I'm like, <clears throat> wow, there is that thing. <laughs> is it like a brochure for 26 minutes where they just like, oh, it's like, this it's, is you know, how the like, toilet works. No, it's it like somebody who, has a, <laughs> somebody who makes a, um, makes a six pick. Hold on a second. I got to call somebody. Six K people is not a city. What? There's tiny cities that have okay. sticks. You know All what right. I mean? Town. Yeah. Okay. Anyways. Um, Town yeah. Chip. It was by like somebody who uh, has a YouTube channel for like reviewing cruises and things like that. So it was just them, you know, um, I think they invited like press people out for like a two day or two night cruise. Um, and it was just them like showing the ship and the different stuff. There's just so much. What to a it. jackass. It's a goddamn that park in what, what a jackass. The YouTuber that has a YouTube that just reviews cruises. That like that awesome. guy's got the, we think playing games is a good, that guy goes on cruises <laughs> and then I can reviews get them. That would be great if I could. If, <laughs> yeah, we got a bad that gig, is, man. We gotta, cool. we gotta get into this cruise <laughs> hustle yeah. thing. We, yeah. fuck. Um, but that was super, super cool. Um, and yeah, now we're going on one in like two weeks, and it just we didn't even plan that. It just ended up happening that way. Nice that the the, the pre planned cr cruise ended up being dated for uh for December like that. So cool, pretty cool, cool stuff. I'm excited. Uh, did you play any games while you were there? Mobile stuff? Or did you just say fuck off to all video oh, games? Yeah. I downloaded um, Hitman's Sniper Assassin game or whatever on their phone. I was like, there's got to be a Hitman mobile game. <laughs> yeah, cool. yeah, there was that I, There was that, that good that good like isometric one. Did you ever play that one? The, that old Hitman game? It came out ages oh, ago. I, like when, oh, the yeah, first, yeah, yeah. Yeah. when the first yeah. iPad came out. Hitman yeah. Go. Is it actually good? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. It yeah. Good. No, it was totally good. All the Go Yeah, games it's like a turn-based... Really it's like a turn-based puzzle game. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. The thing is, though, is like the fun part about Hitman for me is like you know sneaking around and, and shooting people and all that stuff. This is this seems like maybe it would be a little boring for me. I don't know. It's a puzzle game. It's not a Hitman it's game. Puzzle game. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I don't. What I'm saying is I'm dumb, guys, and I need puzzle <laughs> game when I shoot. Death and kill well, it's not like it's not like the fucking hardest puzzles in the world. There, yeah, you'd be fine. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I might try it out. It's one of those games that I bet you it probably looks a little boring to me, but if I play it, I probably actually would enjoy it. I need more like decent mobile games for when I am, yeah, like on, on a trip where without any sort of game fix, you know. Yeah. I have my Switch and stuff, but you can't always just like pull that out. I need stuff, something I can play maybe for like 10, 15 minutes or 20 minutes or whatever. Yep. Rather than like Skyrim, which demands you explore a shit ton of stuff and get lost in it. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I, uh, <clears throat> I actually bought a shit ton of mobile games two nights ago because i ended up getting the new ipad but i got uh Plan planescape torment which i'll never play on the ipad but it's mm -hmm. apparently pretty good yep. uh cool. i got all the rooms because zeke and others have spoken so highly of them um mm -hmm. and there's a fourth one out coming out or already out zeke what do you know is the fourth one already out oh the room the room three i think well there's the room, oh, four. The room four yeah apparently okay. that one's a, a thing as well uh, I heard about it. <clears throat> yeah. Are you, you're talking about your, your iPad, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Um, the, I just got a game for my iPad for my trip to New York. That was called, uh, you know what? Hold that. Okay. And I'll, I will tell you about my, the iPad games that I have bought and loved at a later time. Okay. Because no, my, so my favorite, my favorite mobile game and probably the only mobile game that I still play and it's been out forever. I like, I I'll, I'll download stuff. I'll buy it. I'll be like, I'm going to play this. And then I never fucking do, but I always go back and I play mini Metro. Mini Metro is the shit. I don't that know game what that is, is awesome. I'm not it's sure. really fun. It's, it's a game where you build, uh, you build railways and, oh. uh, it's like a bit of a puzzle game, but it's got like a timed kind of element. And like, as the stations fill up with passengers, you have to like redraw the lines to keep everybody flowing. And it has like just the chillest soundtrack. And I just, I love it. It's such a good game. It's hmm. a super good game. Yeah, Mini Metro. That would be my suggestion. I think it's like two bucks or some shit. So, yeah, I think it was, uh, <clears throat> I think it was wheat recommend that I play this Dragalia lost, which I guess is a type of game that exists they're like i think that's considered a gotcha game i'm not 100 percent certain uh but it's mm -hmm. i can see why they're addicting <laughs> within five minutes yeah, I think, of downloading I think, it 
Marcus Marcus has a very particular taste for for like there's a, a subset of m- mobile games that I think like a lot of a lot of people who are probably in chat right now are like Ugh, mobile games and they hate them but yeah. like he's got pretty good taste and he plays a shit ton of them too so like you're not going to get the bottom tier of these like weird mobile games like he was the one that for a long time after he introduced me hooked got me hooked on uh, Puzzle and Dragon I played the mm. shit of that for like Two, two months and then abandon it completely but it's yeah very much like there's a, a subset of those games and this is why like game reviews and stuff are so like personal because when wheat suggests something you're like okay i know the kinds of games that wheat likes and when yeah. zeke suggests something we're dance like you know you gotta like keep that in mind because you can't just be like what are the best 10 games for this platform yeah like it's just not a thing. Yeah, it was it was a nice this is a completely offset topic from uh, mobile games, but it was a nice um experience when I told Marcus to play Path of Exile and then 3 days later he came to me and talked on the phone about 2 <laughs> hours with questions of just shit in that game. <laughs> uh-huh. I remember I remember you talking about that. Yeah. yeah it so was good. great. It was fantastic. <laughs> it was it was awesome to be able to one speak intelligently enough about that game to answer some of those questions or most of those questions and two to just talk to someone about Path of Exile that didn't think I was a fucking raving lunatic the entire time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Zeke, what are the games and mm-hmm. then we'll get started here with some D&D. Um well one of them I got I okay, first of all, how do I check or find the games that I have bought but uh, uninstalled. On you go my, into the on app store oh. and look at the purchased uh, thing. There's a purchased category on yeah. on the app store. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I can see it at all because I'm an asshole and an idiot. Yeah, <laughs> like, just yes. look it up during the break. Look I mean, it up during the break. I mean, probably probably one of those two things is true, but I don't think both of them. <laughs> um, but. Uh, yeah, it says uh, today games, apps, updates, and search, and no purchase. Well, that's funny. anywho, uh, one of them, the one I was playing was called A Dark Room, and it's it's a text based game, but it's also like uh, sort of a management game, but it has kind of a story to it. Hmm. It's it's I played it for like three hours, like like just straight like because you click you like hit little boxes, and you're like okay, there's little there's little like choose your own adventure elements to it, like. Okay, I want to go to a silent forest. Now I want to go to a dusty path, and then the dusty path, like, rev- like you're right. on this over map, and then you can like move, like your character, and the map is made up of at symbols and like comma symbols, like to represent grass. Yeah, it's and like, trees. um, it's like yeah, like NetHack, NetHack yeah. or, or Adventure. Yeah, yeah, cool. yeah. that's cool. Yeah, yeah my favorite, <laughs> my favorite part about all this, getting all this knowledge, getting all these games downloaded, is I'll probably just watch Jumanji tomorrow. <laughs> not play a single fucking game. Sick. Yeah, <laughs> so, I do that too. Where I'm like, I'm getting on a plane. I'm gonna be on there for hours, and I so I download a shit ton of Netflix stuff and get a bunch of games, and then I just sleep for most of the right. flight or yeah. like read a read a book. Yep. Yeah. Yep. yep. That's usually what happens. <laughs> uh, anyways, we should probably play anyways. some D and Ds. Adam, so let's yeah. do goals. I guess I don't know how. There it is. I don't yeah. know the order you want to do yeah. this. Yeah, so we'll do uh, we'll do we'll do goals for everybody except Berg, and then I have a kind of introduction that I want to do for Berg. Then we'll do goals, and then I'll jump back to where the rest of y'all are at. So uh, cool. let's let's do it. Um, so Ramus, dear old Ramus Krill, what would you like your goals to be today? Uh, first, I want to be figure out what substance is in the vial from the necromancer. Mm-hmm. Or, or what it does. Yep. Okay. Got it. Um. Find a clue that will lead me to Imix is cult. Got it. Okay. Still, and then see if I can. And then keep the other one. See if I can trust my companions with knowledge of the true mission. Yeah. Keep working on them. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Cool. Um. Maharib. Uh, I still have the one from last week. Determine if the lock sound is a worthy fighter. Um, okay. Hmm. I'm trying to think. So you are currently you are currently uh, escorting Ram's Krill to right. um, into the Court of Swords for a purpose he has not entirely revealed to you yet. Uh, you can tell that he is suffering from some illness. Perhaps he seeks <clears throat> the cure. Right. Um, but otherwise, yeah, hard to hard to say what the deal is with uh, with your current employer. Um, and I think you have your own of, agenda. Yeah, uh, you have your own agenda for being in the court, but uh, it's up to you how you want to. 
square that away. Yeah, I think one of the goals will be to um, not necessarily investigate, but find out. Because what I guess before I set this goal, Ramus, what did you tell uh, tell me was the reason for you hiring me as a mercenary? Just to protect you? Uh, to protect me because I'm going to a dangerous place and I need someone there to, to keep watch my back and to not ask too many questions. Uh, then I'm going to ask, or I want the goal to be to have Ramus tell me the real reasons for him hiring me. Okay. Uh, and so maybe that's like convince Ramus to tell me the real reasons for hiring me. Okay. Yeah, that seems good. Uh, okay. So determine if, if Zota is a worthy fighter, learn the real reason that you're in the court of swords, like learn that from Ramus. And then, uh, what did you want your third one to be? Third one will be, um, I don't know. Let me think on it a little sec, a little sec. Yeah, yeah that's fine. <laughs> Um, okay, Zeke, what do you want uh, goals for uh, Yota Zol to be? Uh, well, I have the, the two that are already there. Return to mother and father and impress them with my maturation, with the kind mm -hmm. of grown elephant I've become. Um, help Ramus to determine the cause of his ills. Yep. Um, basically, di diagnose them. See what's what we can do. Uh, and the... Third goal should be um, I, I, I kind of I mean I, I'd want to know who's who's running the show in the court of swords like are the immortals so you were like that kind of shit. yeah I mean I can tell you I can tell you this like you're you're on your way the first the first like major city the first stop and this is where this is where you'll meet up with uh, with Berg um your your first stop in the court of swords is the northern the capital of the northern province it's a one of the three like actual cities in the uh, in the court of swords it's called Baknya, and it's the capital of the northern province and that'll be your first stop um it's a sacred like mountain city um and uh, you will definitely be able to like find contacts there and like explore kind of what's going on uh, on your return like all of this piddly like countryside shit you're not going to learn anything um but once you get to uh Baknya, you will be able to learn something however you want to so that might be like once you get there what do you want to do um i want to find out who's who's uh in charge like now are, are the immortals still in charge or has something else taken over or like what's the hierarchy of the court of swords now okay is that is that sure. something that is a decent goal or can you yeah, help me move yeah, yeah. Better? No, I mean, it's, it's not going to be a difficult goal. Uh, so you'll, you'll be able to complete it relatively easily. Um, so yeah. learn the state of affairs in the court of swords. Okay. Yeah, I'm into it. Okay, cool. Uh, uh, and all then right. Did my you know third just... goal will be uh, <clears throat> to keep... Also, can we get a spelling check on Nunu or uh, what, however you call it? <laughs> Nunu, <that's>, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I've been I've been transliterating it as N I U N I U. Okay. Uh, it'll be to keep uh, Nunu out of harm. <laughs> right. Okay. Keep your keep your new friend, <laughs> your new your new new friend safe. Yes. Got it. Okay. Uh, cool. Okay. Good stuff. Oh my god, Court of Swords, let's go, Nyu Nyu. <laughs> <laughs> He's just following you around. It's cool. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> okay, cool. Um so yeah, when when last we saw you after a brief altercation at the border checkpoint, uh the um the three of you passed beyond uh out of the court of coins and are now in the court of swords proper. Uh you are in the northern uh, you're in the northern province, a mountainous province. Uh it's the highest elevation. Uh the court of uh, the court of swords runs 
narrow north south out into a peninsula and it's at its highest elevation kind of northwest and then descends down into the um the river deltas of so- of the southeast part um each uh each major province has a, a single large city and then there's lots of towns and then villages which is to say like a couple of huts clustered around a few farms uh, dotting the landscape. The Court of Swords is uh, run through like Swiss cheese with uh, the ruins of an ancient dwarven kingdom. Uh, the dwarves have either abandoned the, their their kingdom, uh, disappeared, or have uh, integrated into human society. So you'll find dwarves at a rate of like, you know, one dwarf for every like five or six humans uh, in the Court of Swords. They're quite prevalent. Um and uh, yeah, but they don't live uh, on their own anymore. They've kind of abandoned these these dwarven uh, holds up in the in the mountains. Um, and so instead, as you can imagine, uh, creatures like Mogwai, kobolds, some free orcs uh, have kind of like taken over those those caverns. Uh, and so the mountains are considered to be a fairly dangerous place, uh, or did uh, until the whole court became a fairly dangerous place to be. Uh, now you you head south into the jungle, uh, into the unknown. But your first stop along the way is going to be the city mm-hmm. of uh, of Baknya, which will be uh, some some days journey. Uh, it's not right up on the uh, on the border. Uh, however, you have a friend in in Baknya who has been there uh, for uh, for some time, uh, and I'm gonna I'm gonna figure we're gonna figure out kind of what you've been up to, my man Berg. Um, so first of all, as with the rest of the players, uh, oh hammer of heaven, I have uh, I have a I have a love letter for you. I have I have a roll I need you to roll, and I have some 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 gifts from I the am gods. I'm the hammer of heaven, aren't I? Mm. <laughs> you sure <Yeah>. are. <laughs> <laughs> oh my so, god, if oh, I'm all smug and shit, I would fucking love it. <laughs> that all, that all like right. I'm like. You need Jesus, okay? Listen. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in a lot of ways, he kind of is Jesus. So, right, uh, you know, if Jesus, if Jesus were a barbarian, uh, so, oh, hammer of heaven, welcome home, uh, the court of swords, where you suffered in prison, and before that, under the lash, where you were a slave and then a criminal. Things have changed in the last decade or so, as you'll find, and you've changed too. The blessings of heaven are upon you. Let us see how they are made manifest. So, my Berg, uh, roll 2d6 uh, and subtract your charisma modifier. Uh, and then let me, uh, let me know what you get. So it's going to be 2d6 minus 2. Um, on a 7 to 9, if you get a 7 to 9, you will choose two of these things. If you, get a, if you miraculously get a 10 plus, uh, you get all three of these options. Uh, and we'll see what happens if you, if you fail, if you, if you miss the roll. So yeah, 2d6 subtract 2, yeah. You basically have to get two sixes to get that ten. Yeah, to get that ten, you need. Yeah, I got you seven. Need two sixes. You got a seven. Okay, you got Good a seven. For us okay, though. all right. All so on a seven, uh, on a seven, you're going to choose two of these. I'm going to give you three options, and you can pick two of them. Okay. So uh, the the agency of divine insurance has issued an extra failed death save. You have four now. Use them in good health. Uh, or all those who look upon you know that they see someone who is clearly blessed. You gain advantage on all persuasion checks against anyone who's pious. Or, your swings are true and your arm is strong. Take a permanent plus one to all your attack and damage rolls based on strength. I mean... <laughs> you got three options. Which what three do you want? You got, you got two, two of those three, so... I feel like one and three are pretty damn awesome. Uh, and, and in line with Berg, Berg doesn't really talk good. To people that so that that would make sense persuasion wise, but usually he has other people to back him up in terms of talking. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if you've noticed, um, but the entire party uh, sucks massively at charisma checks. Just across the board, massive, terrible. (laughs) Everyone is. This is the least charismatic party in the history of Dungeons and Dragons. Um, Yeah. So, but so I, it, I mean, maybe that doesn't matter. Maybe it's all about punching and kicking and less about talking. Yeah, and let's be real. Like, number two is is the weakest one of those those perks. If is this, if this mm-hmm. is a video, I'm going to consult the king of min maxing. Dan, what do you think? <laughs> one, one and three. Yeah, one and three. That is my final answer. Okay. All right. So the 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 record um, the record of your soul has been uh, has been marked. 
by the Agency of Divine Insurance, uh, you have an extra failed death save. So you have four now, um, mm-hmm. which means that it takes four failed death saves to kill you. Um, and uh, your, uh, your, your blessing as the hammer of heaven uh, means that your swings are true and your arm is strong. You have a permanent plus one bonus to attack and damage rolls uh, on any strength-based attack. So as long as you're using your, your big divine muscles, uh, you uh, you get your uh, you get an extra plus one to attack and damage. So for now, for now, just remember it, uh, and then uh, what we'll do is we'll um, uh, we'll add it to your character sheet between sessions. I just wasn't sure which ones you uh, you were gonna pick. Mm-hmm. Um, cool. Okay, let me just uh, spin this bad boy up, and we will uh, we will begin. So, Ramus uh, Ramus sent you ahead uh, to the uh, to the Court of Swords. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, you Ramus sent you a head, like yeah, like a severed <laughs> head. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, <laughs> listen, it wouldn't surprise me. Merry Christmas, Berg. Me neither. That's why I went with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, perfect. Can that be a messaging uh, so, service where you just send heads yeah. and then they talk and then they just die? <laughs> they finally pass out. You know, you know what they, you know what they say. Chris, Christmas is coming, and who doesn't love a little head for Christmas? Yeah. So. Yeah. You, uh, yeah, you get, uh, you get sent in advance of the rest of your, of your party. Uh, you have not met Ramus. You knew that Ramus was hanging back to hire, uh, some, some additional muscle, uh, oh. back in the court of coins. Um, but you were sent ahead to, to kind of scout out and to establish, uh, something of like a base of operations. So you've been in, um, Baknya for, I don't know, a while, like maybe like a couple of weeks, um, have you ever been to uh have you ever been to this the city before? I don't think Berg would have been to this city. Where is it located in regards to like the places he he'd been before? Right? Is it I mean, I mean you you were in prison. Um Yeah. Oh no, he Yeah, like you thing. Who I'm were you? I mean, you you we started in you I mean, we, the first time we saw Berg was you were sent to the Shulin Valley to yeah. serve Kukrit and you were released from a Court of Swords prison. Yeah. So uh-huh. that that prison could have been in one of one of the three one of the three major territories. Uh, if you if your prison was in the south, then uh, it probably would have been. Um, like it sort of depends on where you would be sent. Like the worst prisoners would have been in the prisons in the south. If you were uh, in a prison in the north, you'd be more likely to get sent to go work with Kukrit because you don't have to travel the whole country. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's, it's sort of up to you. And then before that you were a slave and I don't know, like, were you owned by humans or by, by dwarves? It was dwarves, right? Dwarves. It was a dwarven. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's possible that you, in your youth, uh, maybe you were bought and sold in one of the slave markets in this city. Um, mm-hmm. this is the other thing about the court of swords is that, uh, slavery is just straight up like fine here. The court of swords mm-hmm. is like, if you, you can own a person and it is fine. And if heaven didn't intend them to be owned, then they wouldn't be right. So it's, it's a part of the, uh, of the economy varyingly depending on where in the, in the, in the court you are. Um, but basically the closer ties, a community has to dwarves, the more tolerant they are of, um, of slavery so uh it's possible you would have passed through this this town at some point or another the city um but i don't know that you ever really got to like explore it or hang out yeah yeah okay um so yeah on your return to the court of swords you walk the streets of baknya like a free a free man um and uh the city is crowded uh not not like (laughs) not city of brass crowded but crowded in the sense that like um, it's, uh, there are a lot of people who have moved here from the, the Southern provinces. Uh, you get the impression, you can tell me kind of what you've been up to, but you get the impression that, that there is some turmoil to the South. And, um, as a result, people have fled, they've, they've left and they've, they've come up North. Uh, some of them are just using this as a staging point to try to cross over into the court of coins, which we saw last, uh, last session. Um, but for you, you're, you traveled the opposite direction. People trying to leave, you've come into the court. You're in the city of Baknya and your job, basically, Ramus sent you ahead and, and then you can, you can tell me if you had any specific things you want a Berg to be doing, but you sent Berg ahead to, to kind of scout and like have a place, a base of operations to begin from. So Berg, what, what have you been up to? And Dan, feel free to, to jump in and, and the two of you can kind of talk about what that would have looked like. 
Mm -hmm. So what you want Berg to have done here? Yeah, would it be more like base of operations in terms of like, yeah, well, I guess what, 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 I, some... I think I would have sent you ahead to find us a discreet place to hide out in and operate from within the city, somewhere quiet where people won't ask questions, where we could just do conduct our business without people, without prying eyes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then <clears throat> that's what Berg would have been doing. He would have been scouting through the city, um, trying to, as much as he can, as much as Berg can remain, uh, you know, low key. Um, mm -hmm. getting a feel for the people and where, you know, like the different districts and stuff of it, depending on how, how big is the city compared to, we'll say on scale of like the city of brass. I'm sure the city of brass is way bigger. Right. Yeah. Like it's, it's every city in the world is smaller except for heaven is smaller than the, the city of brass. Um, if the city of brass is like Mexico city, um, this city would be like, Smaller than Chicago, but not like too much smaller. Um, definitely smaller than New York by by matter of scale. But yeah, uh, it's like a medium sized city. This this isn't the capital of the Court of Swords. That's the southern capital. Um, but it's it's big and it's it's bloated, right? Like there's not enough room for people to live. There's like a tent city that's built up around the the southern uh, the southern edge. There's like fairly massive overcrowding going on because the city's infrastructure is not built for that. Um, also the, the city is built on a, um, a series of caves, uh, that originally belonged to the, um, to the, to the dwarves. So you're, uh, you know, you're finding that there are a lot of people that are kind of jammed into these, these interior cave structures. And then the buildings that are built around it are all, are all full. Um, the city is really more of like a kind of religious stopover point between mm -hmm the the court like between the two courts yeah uh, so yeah finding housing is going to be a challenge um, oh with these caves are they actually so they're there it's like a network of caves underneath the city is that is that correct um okay. it's like adjacent to the city so the city is built on the slopes of the mountain and the lower city or the lower parts of the city kind of extend out to the edge where the jungle is um up above uh there are uh, there are the caves kind of the old the older part of the city um and then there's a like a hilly area that's been like laid out and flattened and kind of like rebuilt into uh into um proper like walls and um yeah. and stuff there are a ton of temples here like each arcana has multiple temples but the 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 city uh, it's it's known to be uh, like blessed by and a, a pilgrimage site for the arcana of the moon um and it's the home of the oldest temple to the moon in like all of the courts um so it's it's like kind of a it's like a religious not like a temple city in the sense that everything is the temple but like there's a lot of uh priests and monks that kind of come and go from here mm -hmm. it's like a sacred place it's also like the source of one of the bigger rivers in the court of swords that flows south from the from the mountains mm. um then i think he probably would have found, try to find a place um, somewhat towards the outskirts, like towards the edge of the city. Um, mm -hmm. And if there was no like good place there to, to that, that could suit their needs uh, as like a base of operations, he might've started scouring a little bit in above the mountain or above the city, like towards the mountain by the caves to see if something then could maybe be made, you know, like just a, a quick little like building kind of thing and to just have the amenities that we need. And he would coordinate with, uh, okay like local tradesmen and see if they can, you know, and just give them a job to, to make something and have some sort of bullshit story. Like, yeah, I want to build a place where I can look at, you know, the city and all that, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Okay. Well, so as a, as an orc, uh, w walking around in, in a court of sword city, it's even a little rougher, yeah, it's a <laughs> city. Yeah. Um, you know, you look <laughs> funny, uh, but, um, yeah, but people don't like you'll, you'll go into, uh, like a, a place to try to get, like to talk to somebody about like, Oh, do you have any space available in this building? Or like, you know, and people will be like, like assume you're here on someone else's errands, right? Mm -hmm. They'll assume that you're working for your master uh, or whatever. Yeah. So it's, so then Burke would have played it's, into it's that. It's tricky. Yeah. Um, because they assume like uh, the idea of a free orc is very strange to them. And also like yeah. people treat you with, uh, people treat you with fear, right? They, they see, yeah. they see the color of your skin. They see your, your prominent tusks and they assume like you're dangerous because in the court of swords, there's a lot of tension between the, the orcs that are free and their former masters. Right. 
Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's a challenge, but no more than any social interaction is a challenge for you. You just notice this, you, you pick up on this. Um, but let's, let's see. So tell me, tell me about like, you want a place, uh, I'm going to make some notes. So you're looking for, uh, let's see, hideout time. Okay. So you're looking for something that is, give me some like descriptors of the sort of place you're looking for. Um, you want something that's like hidden or not necessarily hidden. Um, cause I don't think he just said, Ramus just instructed to find a place that's low key and you know, not, not in the middle of everything. It seems like, um, <clears throat> yeah, fine. It would be like, kind of like a small, even like a, like a small house for rent, you know, if like locals okay. were looking for, uh, tenants or something like that. And if something like that wasn't available, um, then he would have tried a, a different route and maybe go up into the, the hills. Obviously that would be a secondary route because you'd have to have, have something built if there isn't any sort of like actual buildings in those caves that he could just occupy or, or whatever. But it wouldn't yeah, be too hard, yeah. I don't think, to, to have something very rudimentary and simple built, you know, just as a place to uh, rest your head kind of thing and just have like basic amenities. Yeah, there's not, yeah, there's, there's almost no like construction being done in the mountain area of the city because it's all like caves already and there's no new, but it's all old like dwarven architecture, right? So there's already homes and halls and, and like, Mm. vaults and whatever built into the into the city so yeah i mean that that stuff is pretty much occupado from the beginning but uh mm. you could try to find like a tenement or something in the in the like lower part um there have been a lot of new construction to try to like house some of these refugees who've realized like we're not going to get across the border so we're just going to live here instead yeah. um and and yeah i mean this whole this whole situation kind of calls back to uh, what was it? Uh, Mong Vod, maybe when you were like living above the tea shop, right? Mm -hmm. Um, okay. yeah, I think that he's, he's very much aware of that as he's like walking through, like, it's flashbacks of like certain corners that remind him of Mong Vod, certain tea shops, and you know, noodle noodle shops that just like flash him mm -hmm. back and like, huh, this is weird, yeah. And I think it's it's probably like even stranger, like, you're hearing dwarven spoken. Uh, you're hearing Dwarven spoken in the streets, like everywhere. Um, which I, I don't know kind of how you've processed that, but like, that's the language of your, of your former enslavers, right? Like those are people mm -hmm. who, uh, and so hearing that, that language just casually spoken in the street, um, is, yeah, is a bit different. And like the, the place, like this is a, this is very much like a, a homecoming. Like, even if you don't call the city itself home, this is a return to where you came from right where you were yeah. enslaved and where you were a prisoner. So like the, the, the smell of the food carts, you know, the, the spices they use here is different. The food is different. Um, and it, it's very much that, that immediate kind of like return, you, you know, you'll smell some kind of dwarven food cooking in a stall and it, it like puts you uh, at, at a, a sense of dis-ease. So let's, let's have you make a roll. Let's see how you do on a, on a house. Um, and, uh, yeah, and we'll see what, what you got going for you when, when Ramus and them come back. Okay. So I think I think that this role probably will be let me look at your skills. <clears throat> Let's do two. Let's do an investigation role and then we'll do a um uh we'll do a persuasion role. So investigation to find like a good place and then persuasion to, like close the deal. Um and so I think do. investigation, uh, let's just call it, let's call it like a DC 14 investigation check. If you get it, uh, I'll give you advantage on your persuasion check. If you fail, you have disadvantage on your persuasion check. Okay. Oop. Yeah. Oh, Oof. um, Adam. Okay. Good. So am I Good. just like, I, I think I'm going to stay in a mud hut. I mean, I'm I not, think, I'm uh, not worried about it. Cause, <laughs> cause you know, this is, this isn't Berg's failure. This is clearly Shadrick's failure. Right. So cool. Whatever Shadrick was trying to do, he failed at it. Um, but if Max, if you would like Berg to try to make this role, that would also be great. Uh, if you wanted to do, to do that. Okay. So you could just go ahead and sure. Uh, somewhere out in the forest, Shadrick has lost his keys and he's just like, ah, fuck, where are my keys? And he just can't find them can't do it he lost his keys blames the cult <laughs> just can't take account for his own behavior fucking gnomes man all right so let's see how berg does on this investigation check 
See, Berg does better. He still fails, but he, you know, <laughs> that's, that's better. Okay. All right. So, so Berg, you, uh, yeah, it's just like, it's a combination of the fact that you're a, you're an orc and nobody wants to rent to an orc. And also like this place is fucking packed as shit. So I think you, you end up like you're com- essentially competing for, for space, um, with, uh, with a bunch of other people. Uh, let's see if, if you can put forward a, a case. So, um, Let's have you make a let's have you make a roll. Um let's call it a DC. This is a disadvantage. We'll stick with the same DC. DC 14 persuasion check. Damn. We'll see how you how you do. There's a very low likelihood this will happen. Yeah. And if you fail, it doesn't mean you don't have a place. It just means the place is not gonna be great. It's not gonna be Mm -hmm. great. Oh. Okay. Yeah. My minus one. It's not it's not so good. Okay. So basically, uh okay, let me um let me give you some some options. So you you find a place. Um, is this joint uh, expensive, insecure, or uh, dangerous? You're giving me the choice between expensive, yeah, just, insecure, just, just, or dangerous. Yeah, pick pick one of those. So like uh, either the place that you pick is going to cost you way more than than you can afford. So you won't be able to hold on to it for very long. Um, yeah. or it will be insecure in the sense that people will like see you coming and going and like whisper about it. Probably expensive. Uh, to others. Yeah. You wanna go? Okay. Probably so you expensive. Can't... And then let Ramus handle that. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. I know. I love it. So you've made an agreement to pay your landlord. And if Ramus doesn't show up with some money soon, then you're going to be in, you're going to be in trouble. Okay. So let's say you owe, you owe your landlord, who of course is like a filthy dwarf. Um, let's say you owe the landlord like seven hundred gold, because like okay. the deposit's pretty big, and like yeah, so you owe this guy seven hundred gold, and it's payable uh, at the end of the next like uh, when the, the the next full moon, right? Because we do moon moon cycles. So you owe him seven hundred gold, and uh, if you don't pay, things things are not going to go great uh, for you. But the place <laughs> I- that you find is. Um, I don't think it's like a detached like place. I think it's um, I think it's like uh, in a larger like building with a bunch of other uh, a bunch of other people, essentially like a slum kind of situation. Um, but because you don't it's not dangerous and uh, it's not um, uh, it's not insecure. I think it's just a lot of people who are like looking the other way, who think of this as a temporary like crappy place to live and they just are going to move on. And so nobody's really paying a lot of attention to who their, their neighbors are. And people are willing to look the other way. You're probably not even the only like half orc in the building. Um, okay, cool. So you owe the landlord some money and he's going to come and collect, but hopefully Ramus gets here before that. Um, okay. So how, when you're not, when you haven't been like, uh, figuring out this, this house for, for, uh, your Ramus and the companions that will be joining him, what have you been up to? Like, you you kind of have run of this this city and a degree of freedom uh that that you certainly right. have never this had in this, in this country in this country before um so yeah ba- ba- um Baknya is like before you um what have you what have you been getting up to um i think berg's been kind of surveying uh one the like military complement they have here guards where they're at um hanging out purposely in like shittier areas to get um a feel for like you know what sort of trouble they might run into um visiting the local like you know inns and establishments in the area we're closer to where they live um not so often where people raise an eyebrow but when he goes there you know i mean just planning a seat you know and and just listening and keeping uh okay so so not like not like going around and interviewing people, but like listening no, to no, no, like no, 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 no. listening yeah. in. Okay. Yeah. Being as um, much as a fly on the wall as Berg can possibly be. It's hard to do that. But again, it's a, it, since it is a larger city, it's not like, not like a, a bumfuck, you know, village town sure. somewhere. So, you know, an oddity okay. is not exactly like, like, Oh fuck. What is that about? Let's yeah. find out about him. You know? And you were, yeah. and you're doing, you're doing this, uh, like you said, like in, in bars and like taverns and stuff, like places where yeah. kind of people bars are temporarily bar. passing through. Okay. And then walking into, you know, um, shops that, that, that sell weaponry and potions and armor and things like that. Just making okay. contact with the, uh, the local businesses and things that he so, thinks might. 
So uh, here, here's the thing. Um, it's not technically illegal for you to own weapons, but it is yeah. illegal to sell weapons to orcs. Uh, yeah, no, you are not allowed. You're not yeah. allowed to do that. So if you went into a weapon shop, you would probably be like, uh, uh-uh, get out of here. Like we don't, but, but like taverns and, and bars and stuff, that's, that's fine. Um, yeah. If, you did, if I did, so, okay. Berg knew that it was going to be like completely like, get the fuck out of here. Um, then he probably would stay away from the weapon shops as, as much as like going into them a whole bunch. But if he could also, you know, use the pretense and, and, and lean in the whole, like, I'm not here to buy, I'm here to survey for my master, you know, kind of thing. Sure. Then he would okay. Do that. Okay, well, let's do one more. Let's do one more roll. Let's do a performance roll. Um, I'll give you advantage on this because you performing a role you've played before. So make a performance check to see if you can like fake being like I'm here on business for someone else. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, fuck, okay. Man. Yeah, they don't really they don't really trust you so man. much. Glad to have um, Bird back on the show. I haven't haven't rolled higher than a ten yet. Uh-huh. <laughs> Wait till I start swinging, okay? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Remember remember what the option you didn't pick was back at the beginning? Yeah, um, but they would okay. have been pious. <laughs> I mean, uh, people are pretty people are pretty pious around here. So, uh, okay. Let's let's make your let's make a roll. So you you said you're just kind of like listening in. You're you're just basically we're gonna use perception for this chat. You're, actually, you're not trying as little as he needs to. So when somebody talks to him, you know, he'll he'd be brief and maybe cordial, but not so much to like seek out conversations. Uh so as okay. to not arise. Suspicion. Um, yeah. Okay. Sure. All right. Uh cool. Make a make a perception roll. Um do it as uh, do it disadvantage because of your your failed performance check. Um, but there's no target. It's just like as the better you do, the more information I can kind of give you that you picked up. All right, sorry, was what am I rolling? Uh, just perception with disadvantage. Cool. Okay, so you got a nine. All right, okay. So nine will get you kind of the general shit that's going on. Um, you're listening mostly to people who are either uh, refugees from some kind of like ongoing like crisis in the in the south, or people who have seen the flood of those refugees and uh, have have left. They have they have gone uh, away uh, because they're like things are bad and I don't want them to be worse. So let's just pack up our shit and let's get out of here. So um, the stories that people are telling from the south, especially the the Riverlands, is that the there is some like new anti-government anti-court power that has grown in the south um some stories say that it is like a branch of the army right that like some army commander has gone rogue and like built his own army and he's fighting the court of swords um you learn the um the person who would fix that problem person responsible for fixing that problem would be the um the knight of swords and he died he died three years ago and they cannot find his replacement uh, when a member of the a member of the court dies, uh, as we we saw way back when, um, there is like a ritual period of mourning, and then immediately they go looking for um, the person who is supposed to be that either their reincarnation or the the next person to to assume the title. Uh, three long years have passed, and they cannot find them. And this is what a lot of people blame. Um, this is what a lot of people blame the current trouble on. Um, you hear the phrase uh, three wheeled wagon" a lot. Um, can you make a religion check for me? I just want to see if Berg would recognize that phrase. It's a human phrase, so like maybe, maybe sure. not. See, like DC eight. <laughs> nah, it sounds familiar, but you're not. Yeah, it's not doing it for you. Uh, Berg's you're like, back. Oh, that's that's great. Nice. But, yeah. <laughs> Zero, okay. nine, eight, so, four, nine, yeah, seven. So yeah, a lot of people are referring. They're referring to the court of. They're referring to the court of swords as a three wheeled wagon. You don't know what that means. It's secret human code. Um, and, uh, yeah. And it just seems like, so that's the thing people say, like somebody broke out, like a, a army broke up. This has been going on for, depending on how, how you ask and how far South people are coming from, like at least three years, but maybe five and maybe 10, like it's, it, there's an uprising in the South and nobody really knows, but there's a, there's a, another layer of rumor where either there's like a Robin hood situation going on where people are like, no, no, people are misinformed. Like this new, this new leader in the, in the South 
uh, you know, they're they're the co- they're the true like leader. They're the cause of justice, right? Look at like we have to pay all these taxes and and we have to we have to like tithe to the to the arcana. But like in the south, there's a new leader rising, and he says we don't have to do those things anymore, right? He's gonna he's gonna protect us, and the army has just gone to go and step on this guy, and he's like really in charge. But then the flip side of that is people's stories that are about like, oh no no no, this guy is like a dark warlock, and he commands armies of the dead, and uh, you know he he uh you know he murdered my grandma him and his his army his troops so you know there's this rumor mill kind of percolating and that's sort of the best you can get on a on a nine um i i don't know if berg has the sort of socioeconomic chops to recognize the effects of a mass like wave of refugees that have flown especially in the last little while like the last year or so this city has just become overwhelmed but honestly mm-hmm. like this refugee situation has been going on for like almost a decade if you ask some people so the city like this is where you live you live in one of these places that was like we're just gonna build this temporarily to house some of these people until they can like go where they're going and now they just live here uh yeah. and they have been for like Nobody there are people who are like just, yeah leaving it yeah they were born developing a city yeah born on the road uh, and and have always lived their entire young life like waiting to cross the border into that promised land of the court of coins where things are different and they have money and and promise. But here, there is this creeping suspicion that everything is just fucking falling apart. Right, that the the center cannot hold. Um, and uh, yeah, and that's kind of how who, how uh, things are. Might have been responsible for that happening in hmm. swords. I don't know. Yeah, hard hard to say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sh- I'm sure whatever happened, it's they were they were well meaning. Totally. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so that's that's what you that's what you know, uh, Berg, from the from the people in the uh, in the court. So you, I don't know, Ram- Ramus, would you have sent ahead? Like, did you? God, getting getting like an a message to Berg would be very challenging. Um, did, did, did the two of you as like, as a retcon, did the two of you like have a plan for Ramus to stay in touch or Ramus were you just like, you know, look for me to the East at dawn of the third day and you know, I can ride in on <laughs> we shadow. Just, we just have a special connection since we've known each other for so long. It's like a telepathy, <laughs> but way cooler and more mysterious. Right. So when you reach, you know, 90 plus episodes, the characters all have PC telepathy. You don't even need the eye language anymore. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, sure. No, that's I- no, that's not how. I think it's closer to the Gandalf scenario where I tell I told him like I would expect to be, arrive around a week or this time, and we'll camp to the edge of the woods, and there'll be a we'll have a campfire to the east. And if you see it, if you see smoke, that's probably where we are. We'll oh, so you end. have yeah, you have like so there's I mean there's shit tons of campfires, but like you could <laughs> have brought something particularly like with you to like throw in the fire to make a, yeah. a color mm-hmm. of smoke. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. Sense. Yeah. So if you see red smoke and and so in terms of scale, like Berg, you've been here for all like a while, right? Like you spent the first little while like sleeping in um <laughs> like in the in a temple. Um and uh it's yeah, it's not it's not the case of like, hey, it's Ramus, I haven't seen you in a couple days. Like you, you went on ahead probably months ago, um, and so now you're finally kind of like looking forward to uh, to that being reunited with. Um, I mean, looking forward with Ramus. I don't. Know. I mean, lo- looking forward in the sense of like, <laughs> yeah, you're looking forward to it. Uh, in no, the fact that Berg it's forward likes Ramus as much as yeah, it's worth it. So let's let's do let's do goals for for Berg. Um, okay. What do you what do you want to do? Uh, Reunite session? with Ramus. Boom. XP. I mean, yeah, um, like you could if you want. No, um, this means I'm going to put something between you and that. Yeah, not that. Has Ramus shared too much of his? Have you shared too much of like what you plan on doing to Berg? Like, is is that fully uh, apparent to him, or is a little bit of that kind of held closer to to Ramus's chest? I think all you know is that we've come to the Court of Swords to try to find a cure for my sickness. That's all I really have told you so far. Okay. Okay. And like, uh, Imix hasn't come up or, or any of that, Ramus? Not too much. The specifics haven't. We're like, the getting there was just going to be such a huge thing that we'll, we'll yeah. discuss the specifics once we're there. Okay. Um, so yeah, that, that'd probably be one of the, one of Berg's goals. Find out more of Ramus's 
actual plan, like, and why mm -hmm. we're here in this city, particularly. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. I let I love how many people have, <laughs> I love how many people have goals that are like, get the fucking truth out of Ramus. What the hell are we doing in this shithole country? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Okay, cool. Like I just I just imagine Berg my god, it's perfect. So Berg, we we would start we start the episode in Berg's apartment and it's like hot and sweaty and everything sepia and there's a fan circling around on the ceiling and the doors are playing and Berg's like I was like I was back in Saigon. Yeah, it's perfect. All right. So so learn what we're doing in uh Okay, learn what we're doing in the Court of Swords. Okay, um, and then uh, what else you want to do? Always hard to come up with goals when it's like fresh-ish, you know. Um, <laughs> make sure the rent. Well, actually, you know what? I don't even know if he would care if the rent got paid because it's a fucking. Dwarf. I mean, you could just uh, say, uh, deal. "How well has the dwarf been? The 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 guy been paying or treating Berg?" If they've had, uh, you have you, you have not seen him. He he is he owns he owns the building and he comes and goes on rent day, but right. uh, you it hasn't yeah it hasn't come yet. So, all right. Okay. So dealing with the landlord situation is certainly a thing. Yeah, yeah, we can make that a goal. Like yeah, yeah. Deal with we'll we'll okay. we'll phrase it deal with uh yeah the, the landlord situation like you said. Yeah. Oh, well, that still needs to be resolved. <laughs> mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, and um, yeah, is there anything else that you like Berg particularly want to do in uh, in uh, Baknya or in in the court or whatever? Or do you just want to like leave leave that one open for now? Um, I think. Uh try to help find a cure for Ramus's ailment. Okay, sure. Nice. Okay, lots of good uh, <clears throat> overlap on that one. Righteous. Okay, cool. Um, I am righteous, so thank you. That's, that's, Berg's, that's Berg's situation. Berg has secured this, this tenement apartment uh, and, uh, and, and currently is, is sweltering away in the the hot heat of uh, the northern uh, court of uh, of swords. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Yota, Ramus, and Maharib, uh, we find the three of you traveling the Golden Road, uh, heading south. Uh, let's say three or four days ago, let's call it four days ago, uh, you left behind uh, the incident at the border, uh, and there's another two days ahead uh, before you reach... Uh, before you reach the the city uh, of uh, of Baknya, source of the Maybach River, and uh, from there the the whole of the court opens up to you if you travel by river. So it's it's sort of the first place that that any traveler goes. Uh, you have seen along the way travelers heading north, uh, beleaguered, dusty, eyes that look like they have seen some shit, uh, but they all head down, march past you. Um, maybe once in a while you get a look from someone that's sort of haunted this look of like you're going the wrong way um but for the most part uh you know these these two or three caravans you've passed they don't they don't speak to you or, or interact uh, it is not a friendly road um and i think that as we as we fade in on the on the group of you you see uh you see there's a ditch so if you're traveling south to your left there are uh, kind of rice fields, um, most of which are still operating. So there are people, uh, you can see farmers at the distance in the, the hazy heat, um, you know, kind of in unison kneeling and planting uh, rice. I guess it'd be past the planting season, so they're tending to the fields. Um, and then occasionally the, the, the dots of these little, um, these little villages or, uh, or huts kind of like break the monotony of the of the the vast emptiness and you know somewhere to your to your left far off to the to the west is the ocean um to your right there are foothills 
And as you get further and further south, the foothills get taller and taller. And occasionally you'll stumble across, a, a like you'll see a dwarven ruin, uh, maybe an ancient uh, statue carved of long faded stone, you know, the, the hands and face having fallen to rubble, but the shape of a, a dwarven warrior or king uh, kind of up in the, in the mountains. Uh, and those mountains are getting taller and taller as you head, uh, head south. And you're kind of moving up this, this slowly winding upwards path. Uh, and today, the reason why we kind of like tune in to you here is that ahead of you on the road, and I think Maharib, you spot it um, because your job is to be uh, cognizant of these things, to look out for trouble. Um, you spot uh, the circling of carrion birds in the sky. Uh, you figure whatever they're circling over is like two hours down the road from you. You can't see anything right from here. There's still several day, uh, several hours of light before uh, night falls. But yeah, that's what you spot is the dark shape of carrion birds circling in the sky. Maybe a half dozen of them. Okay. This is a new day, right? Uh, oh yeah, you've all had long rests and stuff. That that okay. the the last session was several days ago. Okay, cool. Okay. Um, I think I slow the pace of of the ox then a tiny bit. Uh, where's okay. everyone sitting? If I'm kind of in the driver's seat, where's everyone else at on the, uh, so this is, um, this isn't, uh, like a person carriage. Um, it's like a cargo carriage. Uh, it doesn't mean people can't sit in it, but there's no like driver's seat. Okay. So it would be like, uh, two, just two wheels with like a wooden thing and then an ox pulling it. There's the cool ox. Okay. So we're kind of just not laying down, but I'm sitting like kind of Indian style. Someone, on well, someone could sit like to counterbalance the weight. Basically they could just sit on it. Yeah. Or you could like stand, but basically this new, new uh, only goes as fast as a person does. Yeah. Uh, so you can, you can just walk alongside. Okay. Yeah. And I was going to say like, if, <laughs> if no one else takes it or no one else speaks up, like immediately when we start out, like I'll always take the back, like the cart. Like the back yeah, of the car. Right. Because, so you don't have to walk. Yeah. So I don't have to walk. And also, like, it's big enough for me. Like, I'm I'm not used to, like, having enough room. Well, then that's probably how we're situated. Uh, Zoe's at the back. I'm at the front. And then Ramus is maybe in, like, the center just lying down or something. Because Ramus, we wouldn't make Ramus walk. He's the one that's paying us <laughs> to be here, right? <laughs> so. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I, like, I pull back on the reins. Um uh, with intent to eventually just like stop um, the ox at all and um, turn back around to, to Ramus. Uh, Master Krill, there are crows in the sky. Does not bode well. What, what, is, what does that usually mean if there's crows? Uh, dead, usually. On the ground in front of mm -hmm. us. Hmm. Looks about an hour or two away. Well, could just be a dead animal for all we know. But we should definitely be on the lookout. Fair enough. You're paying. And I like start the ox up again. You know, I rev the ox yeah. up and get it back into new <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. And yeah, you stall you stall you stall the ox a couple of times. Damn it. And then God yeah. damn this. I need to get this ox worked on. <laughs> you can't you're flooding it. You're just you give it a second. Fuck. <laughs> All right. So so Nunu uh yeah, Nunu starts to to pull the there's a a, a low grunt and uh, Nunu starts pulling the cart again, you know, the momentum spent, uh and, and gives you a look like, how dare you? I was I was walking. We were doing fine, uh, and you and you continue uh, you continue along the way. Yeah. Um, uh, okay, cool. Uh, so I'll, I'll go for about uh, you, you just want to head along the road. Yeah, I'll go for okay. about an hour and then keep an eye. Like if uh, any of the crows are leaving, if it's getting more densely populated uh, in the sky, etc. Try to keep an eye on it. Okay. Yeah. Um, you don't, it doesn't seem like it. You see some of them dip from the sky to like come down and, and investigate closer. Um, but yeah, there's no, I mean, make a, make like a perception check. Cause you're, you're kind of on alert, right? 18. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, you're definitely headed towards something that is dead. Um, but it doesn't seem like there's any reason to feel like you're personally in danger. You or your charge. Uh, 
Would I just know or would I need to make a roll to understand that if it's this many crows in the sky, it's not just a dead animal? Like, is that inferred? Um, I mean, you can make a nature check if you want. Okay. Um, yeah. 16. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot. So it's either it's either like a bunch of dead things or it's like one big dead thing. Okay. Uh, does anyone pass us in the hour? that uh no. i've noticed no Has, were no, people the road passing is us the, prior to that the road is lonely the road the road is lonely and actually with an 18 and now that you ask uh the road is lonely and even though you see like if you squint in the haze right the sort of mirage heat uh rippling up from the, the rice fields you don't see um you don't see any farmers in the in the field um you know you you maybe 20 minutes ago you walked past a ways off, you walk past a little cluster of uh, farmhouses, but you haven't seen anybody out in the field. Okay. Um, then once again, the ox starts to slow, uh, and I'll turn around. Master Krill, the crows have not moved. I'm beginning to worry. We haven't seen anyone. There's no farmers in these fields either. Do you still wish to continue? Hmm. You're right. There's... It's dead quiet out of here. Hey, um, <clears throat> Adam, do we do we still hear sounds of nature and animals around us, or is it like dead quiet? Um, yeah, there's not a lot of like wilderness around to begin with. Um, so it's quiet, but like there's these carrion birds, these these black winged shapes up in the sky. Um, so quick question. Can I roll a passive perception because I'm sleeping, but something like a strong smell that would wake me up? Oh, yeah, sure. I mean, you can roll perception and that can, that can just be the thing. Like you're always kind of like sniffing at the air. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah, dude. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, you smell like rotting, rotting meat and also <sighs> like, um, uh, like uh I wanna I wanna say like lime. Not like the fruit, but the other thing. Uh the the mineral. Uh, where where are we? What time is it? I'd look up. Oh, did I roll persuasion? Whoops. Oh, that would be why. Is it what's your what's your bonus for perception? Same. No. Okay, so don't worry about it. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> Is it like midday, Adam? Uh it's it's past it's past noon, um but not not nearly anywhere near like sleep time yet. Okay. Yeah, it, you've got like 8 or 8 or 9 hours of um like there being acceptable light. It'll get dark in like 5 hours, but it's the days are long right okay. now, so you got lots of travel time. Yeah, I turned to Zoe. Uh the sun is still high in the sky. We have a day or two left. Sorry to wake you. Are we passing a graveyard or something? I no. can smell it. I could not smell it, but <clears throat> there are ravens in the sky circling. Mm. There's. I don't like it. Would I know anything about like uh, ritualistic? Uh, like burial or something like that with lime. Because I know lye you cover bodies with, right? Yep. Yep. But lime. Um, uh -huh. Usually like the... Check or? Mm, I mean, to it would be like a... Uh, like this is like a generic, like, do you know stuff? A Wikipedia check. Um, right, right, right. Just make like an intelligence save. Okay. Oof. Okay. Okay, yeah. I mean, lime, lime is like a kind of stone. You know, I mean, I don't know. It's, it smells like um, we're passing like a mining accident. <clears throat> Someone was digging at the stone and maybe there was a collapse. I see. Well, Master Krill, you are the king of this, I guess, expedition, so... Do we continue on? I'm the what again? 
It's a figure of speech, Master Krill. Do not get a I big head I just wanted over to it. hear you say it. I will not <laughs> repeat it. Well, we should be very careful. If what we just saw at that bridge is an indication, there could be more of these undead creatures harassing people, perhaps killing them. We need to be very careful on our, and alert at all times traveling this area. But we need to press on. This is the only road. As you wish. That I like. Uh, I guess I would just like hit the not stirrups. I'm not very good with horses, so whatever this is. Yeah. I mean, there's no. There aren't really any. There aren't really reins. Like reins. Like there aren't. Like reins are for for riding or riding behind the thing, and you would be walking beside it, and so it's just following you. Um, okay, actually, like then I just like a crop or a switch. Yeah, like here, here's what I do. Yeah, you just yeah. whip I'll, it in the butt. I'll actually like stand up and reach for the apple that was given to me by the um, the common person, <laughs> mm -hmm. and yep. uh, go up and like uh, either I guess just like stroke the uh, the axe's head and put the uh, put the apple in front of his mouth. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, he like I'll, reaches for it to bite it. I'll hop off the cart. And start okay. and and walk beside on the other opposite side of the of the ox than Marib, um, uh -huh. and like take like as soon as soon as I like hop down like a big old swig off of my off of my wine jug uh -huh. that's like strapped on me so I can't drop it. <laughs> okay, um, I like. And I just walk dogs. walk beside him. That's uh, that's what I'm doing. Just walking beside him. Okay. Keep okay. my my eyes, and nose, and ears open. Um. I think as you like approach, I'd look over. Does that heighten the senses? What's in that uh, vase of yours? Mm. Well, I'm glad you asked. It's um. It's hard to. Hard to put my finger on but it let's just say yes it does <laughs> all right i noticed it did not uh impact you in the fight earlier the other day no it didn't in fact i'm writing a uh an instruction manual of sorts from what I've learned from my travels about how it affects the impact of blows and it well, I mean I'll let you read it sometime. You do read? Yes. My people would oftentimes drink that before a war, but that was to shrug off the pain, not fight better. There is a lot of that as well. And it loosens you up makes you more flexible blows don't land as hard and yours land twice as hard hmm. i have to ask did master krill tell you of his powers before you joined him it was a surprise to me hmm. i could suss it out by the way he was dressed and the way he looked a little bit, but his power for, for drinking is what impressed me the first, the first time we met. Hmm. The man knows his wine. Yes. Please keep that to yourself. The wine, that is, not the information. Um, would you like to try some? No. Thank you. <laughs> Suit yourself. Another big old pull. Just... Yeah, I like keep on patting the ox. We have about an hour until we reach whatever those birds are circling, so. I'm not worried about it. It's probably just some accident. Yes, another benefit of that wine, it seems. And I start like walking back towards the cart. And I, I, I kind of, 
you see like his trunk like or my trunk um wrap around the bottle and then i just you see him kind of whisper to it like oh don't worry he just doesn't understand you like i do (laughs) (laughs) cool okay so uh yeah if there's nothing else that you want to do in the in the amount of time that it's going to take you to get to whatever is causing these these birds um you uh you arrive and you you come upon it so the smell gets stronger and stronger um this kind of like weird kind of chemically like taste it in the back of your throat smell and then under that smell the smell of of meat uh baking in the sun right um that that kind of like awful smell to both sense of the words of like you know punctured intestines laying out in the open um and as you approach you can see that the 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 birds have more or less landed on the road around uh on the side of the road there's a pit that's been dug it's maybe like three feet deep about 10 feet long like five feet six feet maybe wide so like a shallow pit to one side um Bits of the road uh, and the edge of the pit are covered in this like thin white dust. Uh, and there are birds, these black birds, kind of all around the pit, but something is keeping them from going in. Like they're nervously like standing around, but it seems that like the smell maybe is repelling them. Um, and yeah, you start to you start to walk. Uh, you, you see this. It comes into your vision. You kind of come over a little hill. Okay, and how far? You can't off? see what's in. You can see what's in the pit. How far um, off is it? A couple hundred. It can feet. Maybe a hundred feet. Okay. Yeah, at that. Yeah. Uh, there's something in that pit, Master Krill. So. I do not think it is wise to bring the ox up close. Would you mind walking from here? Very well, if I must. Uh, be very careful. I have a bad feeling about this. Zo, are you joining us? Oh, yes, of, of course. Uh, and I, like, <laughs> start walking towards the, the, the smell or whatever. Or the pit. Towards, the, pit. Towards the, the pit? pit. Yeah. yeah. I mean, before. the smell is coming from the pit. Before yep. we leave, or before I leave, um, whatever, like, I would assume I have some sort of sheet or uh, something in, in what I sleep in. So I want to tie that over the ox's eyes so that if anything does, yep. like, spring up, uh, it's and not spook spooked. It. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'll probably yeah, yeah. Okay. figure out some way. Let me look at my inventory. Uh, some way to like tie the ox down so that it can't necessarily move from here. And I'll, I'll probably pull it off the road just a tiny bit. Yeah, there isn't really much to tie it to. Is there any trees? Like, not really. Like this area is pretty flat. Any um, giant rocks that but, I could pick up? <laughs> <laughs> and just like what with the giant rock? Like, uh, I don't want to turn it into a thing. But it yeah, throw a rope to it or just like stack the cart so that the ox yeah just like pull. tie it to a boulder yeah. yeah sure i think that's i think that's reasonable yeah okay yeah that's what i do okay yeah so you find a boulder your rope's like long enough you like throw it around and like tie a, a knot um and yeah you knew just stands there kind of like annoyed but then you put the blinder on just like Meh, just kind of stands around swipping its tail back and forth yeah um yeah, and uh, yeah, and that's that's another thing I guess that you would notice. There's no bugs. There's no like like if there's something rotting in that pit, there should be flies. But you don't hear buzzing and you don't see flies like buzzing around. Right. Okay. Um, yeah. So I would do all that. Um, and if if Ramus is having a hard time getting out of the uh, or just actually moving at all, I'll definitely ha- help him along. Okay. Uh, but if not, we start making our way towards the pit. Okay. Yeah. So we uh, we follow the group of you as you approach the the edge of the pit, and we kind of do a panning shot up over your shoulders. So we look down and we see the edge of you. Uh, this we see the edge of the pit, and we see the four of you approach it. Uh, in the pit, so the pit is it's only like three feet deep. Uh, lying there, you see maybe like a dozen uh, corpses. Uh, they're hard to tell what they are because they're missing their hands and their heads. 
uh, they're naked uh, of of mixed sex, uh, and they're all covered in this like white like powder, uh, and they're just lying lined up in a row at the bottom of this pit. Can we tell how they were killed at all, or is it too much of a? Well, they're I mean they're missing their heads and hands, so yeah, okay. Uh, I would like to make a religion check, Adam, if this is some sort of ritual that a known call or something does. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I I Great. turned to Ramus to say that, but I already see you actually Whoa. doing something. <laughs> yeah, I mean, de- desecration desecration of the of the mortal flesh uh, is not really sanctioned within any member of the like any member church of the. Um, uh, the arcana that you can think of, right? The the hanged man and death both have some degree of like self-flagellation, but inflicting wounds on others uh, in this fashion doesn't seem familiar to you. Um, it could be some kind of like demon cult or like a druidic cult. Um, but uh, yeah, like it does, there's nothing, this doesn't jump to mind for you. You're not just like, oh, of course, this is the work of, it just seems to be like, a dozen beheaded human beings whose hands have been cut off of varying like ages. Uh, it doesn't, I guess with a, a crit, it doesn't read ritual to you. It reads something else. There's no, there's no religiosity here. Uh, so with a, with a crit, like it's the absence of the, of the thing. So I guess I can tell you, this is not a religiously oriented uh, activity. It's a religious. In fact. Well, doesn't it like, doesn't covering a body in lime like mask the smell? It's supposed to. Like yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> what? This is no burial. Whatever did this was f- not burying these people, but just leaving them to rot. Yes. Some need to have a look around. They could still be here for all we know. Could be undead. Could be Mara culted. I don't know. It's just never seen anything like this. But if it was senseless killing, they would not collect the bodies in this way. They would move on and collect all the goods. So there was a plan here. Yes. The. Uh, how are they? Like they seem somewhat fresh or are they like heavily decomposed make a medicine check with uh, uh like intelligence 15 okay um yeah it it they look like they died like within a week but it's like it's hot and there's this weird stuff on them um that is affecting their decomposition um but yeah they they died like within, I'd say you could probably nail it down to within a few days. Definitely killed recently. Not today, but probably within a few days at most. Yeah. Mm. I'm gonna, can I do investigation to see if I can find out what killed them? Uh, yeah, I mean, just do you want to do it just from standing here and looking at them, or do you want to get down in the pit and have a closer look? Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll take a close look for sure. Okay. Uh, can you make a constitution save? And actually, you have a to. sensitive... You got a sensitive schnoz, so do it at disadvantage. Okay. 11. Nice. Okay. 10 is all you needed. Uh, yeah. Okay, so yeah, this the stench is much worse. Um, it's like... It's like the smell of, of someone who uh, doesn't have time to bathe and has tried to cover their stink with perfume. Only there's this kind of like chalky, like rotten smell. And then under it, just the, the sub note that you can almost taste more than you can smell is, yeah, is like hot, rotten flesh. Um, and so you, you take a few steps down the, the ridge of the pit and get down in there. Um, and yeah, you, you take a look at the, at the bodies. <laughs> As, um, as you as you see uh, uh, Yota getting closer, you see like every couple of steps you hear like a little, <laughs> like he's trying to blow the smell. Clear, clear your nose. nose, yeah, yeah, <laughs> totally. Okay, um, so make yeah, make your investigation check. 
I only, I only suggested it because it seemed like the, the next logical step, but my investigation sucks. Oh, oh. man. <laughs> I yeah like your eyes are watering and like there's something so unnerving about being dead like it's different it's like you've stepped into a mass grave I don't I just don't think you can concentrate you can't like you can't bring yourself to keep staring at these dismembered people yeah I well, think you have think, to bail out yeah no I, I I I take a like one last step to get to get as close as I can and then the wine starts to come up and I was like oh yeah and I'm out I'm out. Right. <laughs> okay, make a you make another like, con save. Run, like, stumble. Yeah, make another like make, shit. make yeah. another constitution save. Make another con save. Uh we'll say DC ten. Uh okay, right. so you you can you manage to not like lose it at the edge of the pit and just like hurl up the the bile and wine that's in your stomach. So yep. while Yota is trying not to puke, uh Ramus and Mahari, what are you doing? Uh is this the this is a, what the uh, birds are circling? Without a doubt, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The birds, the birds can smell the rotten meat, but it looks like the the smell of the the lime is like keeping them back. Okay. Um, where are the heads and feet, and arm, and the hands? That, why take just those? Baffling. I do not know how to begin to answer that, Mr. Krill. Maybe uh, one of you without such a strong sense of smell could go down there. I tried to see, maybe look at their their clothes or their... um. I don't smell anything. I don't know what you're talking about. No, no just, just look. It smells fine. What? Mm. <laughs> I'm going to go keep new new company. If you, I'll be there. Just collect me when you're when you're ready. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And you try to get like, I guess, upwind of the. I mean, there's it, the air is still so. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and Ramus totally like like you you're it's just a bunch of like chopped up bodies. Like Yeah, I don't, I don't really even really care they're there. Like yeah. I don't care because they care. Like, yeah, you don't like you, you can't you don't know what Yoda is freaking out about. And it's not like oh no, dead people. Like yeah, I just, think there's I, just a bunch of I, corpses in a hole. I just walk up to them and just start looking at them and pushing them around, seeing what I can find out. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely noticed yeah. that he's not phased by this, and it's not because he's just a yeah. constitute man. <laughs> he just rolls his sleeves up and yeah. climbs down into the pit to fuck around in there. Uh, okay, yeah, go make an investigation check, Ramus. Twelve. Okay, all right. Uh, it seems to you that uh, these are not these are not like um, they didn't die in a fight, right? They they don't have like defensive wounds. Um, most of them look like they were killed, uh, by being stabbed, uh, either with like a sword or a spear, uh, or shot with arrows, but the arrows are all absent. None of the bodies have arrows in them. Um, they seem to, there are a few probably that were killed just straight up by getting their head chopped off, but it looks to you like the, the severing of the hands and heads came after they were killed. They all have like a wound, a death wound. Yeah, I think I'm just down there putting my fingers in the hole, seeing how deep the entry wounds is. Just looking at the yep. bodies, looking out like, oh, that's that one looks interesting. Just admiring the entry of the the, the stab. Just not really caring. The, this, this is just fascinating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there are there are a couple of corpses that are um, uh, like adults, uh, and they they look like. Maybe they were they were killed first. Everybody else has pretty precise, like stab to the heart. Um, the others look there. It's a little messier. Like one of the bodies, you turn it over and it's like cut open uh, in the stomach, and you turn it over and it's like liquefied fucking guts pour out. But you don't. I mean, you don't care. And Mahari, if you're yeah, watching Ramus just like oh, rummage through the bodies, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm, standing I'm up above. We him. see we see your we see your shadow fall on on Ramus, and maybe Ramus, you turn this corpse over and look up, and you see Mahari looking down at you. Well, 
They're definitely just like stab wounds. I I don't know. Hmm. Perhaps there's like someone nothing. hit him in the heart. That good aim. Perhaps there's nothing to be done then. I'm sure they have fled. I mean, they could have at least buried it. You, know, you don't leave a mess out like this, but yeah, you know, what am I going to do? Well, they moved them yeah. into a pit together. That is odd, is it not? Well, it's easier to big, dig one big hole than a bunch of little ones. But why dig a hole at all? I don't know. That is weird. It, yeah. It, and I don't and they're know like, what... They're like, they're, they're like lined up, too. Like, it isn't like they were just casually discarded into a central hole. They're laying, like, next to each other. They're not arranged, right? Like, it's not, like, in a perfect line. But they're all, yeah, they're all lying... Yeah. Does does this uh does this pit look like it was used for anything else before or like it was already here or like it was dug? Nah. No, there's like a pile, there's a pile of dirt like next to it. Like it looks like they hmm. dug it and then threw the bodies in here and then didn't even bother covering them up. They just threw this lime over them and then left. Hmm, looks if I had to guess, it seems to me someone needed a bunch of hands and heads. I don't know why. Mm. It'd be a ritual. Yeah, it, it could don't... be like a, gr a grim harvest. Yeah, it's true. <clears throat> hmm. Well. Could be cannibals. I don't know. I suppose if there's nothing to be gained, we should continue. If you want to come down here, look, it's quite fascinating. I do not want to go down there, sir. Unless you're commanding me to do so. No, no, no. You can do whatever you want. All right, well. Uh, I don't think I'm going to learn anything else down here. Very well. Or walking out. Yeah, I like put my hand okay. out to just... like Yeah, give you a hand to pull him up out of the pit. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, As totally. I'm doing Makes so, I, okay. I, I, I like scoop him up and... Uh, Master Krill, may I ask you a question? I don't know. Can you ask me a question? <laughs> I'm going to assume that was a yes. How is it that you are able to rummage in dead corpses? I've been on many battlefields. Death is not a scarcity in my life, but I do not enjoy being around it being consumed by it like you do. How were you able to do that? You know, I I don't know. I feel like that should have been horrifying, but just didn't feel anything. Didn't care. You do not care what happened to these people. Not really. Some peasant people dead. Happens all the time. Hmm. Fair enough. I just like to start walking back. We should continue back to the ox. We have some distance to make up. Oh, that's right. Berg. I'm sorry? Oh, my friend Berg. We're heading to meet him. I'm forgetting. See. Fair enough. Let's go find this berg. <laughs> As you come back, like to the to the ox and where the ox is like stationed or tied up, you see me like kind of kind of sitting and talking to the ox, just mumbling stuff, and and then like offering the ox a a drink from my wine jug. Like well, I hate drinking alone. You want to? <laughs> Have some of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nunu hears your voice and just like, brrr, like makes noise, and like swaps his head back and forth, but he can't see you. So from down the path, you you hear a master Zo, please. Our ox would not like to be drunk. 
Yeah, you don't, don't know get that. the ox drunk. I do not know that, but I would not like him to be drunk, and thus he would not mm. like to be drunk. Very well. What uh, what did we discover? Did you see their clothes? What they were wearing? They were all naked. Mm. All dead by stabbing, mostly to the heart. Some seem like they didn't want to be killed or were messy about killing them. I don't know. Mm-hmm. And all the heads and arms and feet are gone. I don't, uh, hands and feet are gone. I don't know what that's all about. Never heard of someone collecting heads and stuff. I, but things are very different here now. <laughs> yeah. I'm starting to like mm-hmm. collect the whatever the ox was tied to, collecting the rope and taking the hood off. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Now, Adam, feel free to tell me if this is not something I would know, but would I like suggest that maybe it's for so they don't like come back from the dead? <laughs> I mean, I, you can you can theorize that if you like. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, make a like make an arcana check. Okay. Oh god. Okay. Nine? Yeah, it's it's you have no reason to like know how to back that up, but you're like Right. Yeah. So no, they, they still have their feet, their feet and their legs and their arms. They just don't have hands. They're cut off at the wrist. They don't have okay. hands. Um okay. okay. But you I mean, that's a thought. You're just like, oh, what if? But if someone pressed you on it, they're like, Why do you think that? You'd <laughs> you don't have any facts to back that up. Right, right, right. Okay. Maybe they cut off their heads, so if they, someone tried to bring them back from the dead, maybe they couldn't see where they were going. Perhaps so. Onward. Indeed. It is unfortunate that they were killed in what otherwise seems meaningless combat, but... It is the way of the world. I think the ox like starts going. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Sure. So, uh, we, we, we cut forward. Um, and Berg, where, where are you? Where are you when you see Ramus's signal? What are you doing when you, you glance to the horizon and you see the, the like whatever green smoke or red smoke. Is this um what time of day is it? It's up to you. You can decide. Doesn't matter to me. Um he's probably just going to grab some food real quick, like going to like a noodle stand or something like Hell that. Hell yes. Cool. Okay, so we see we see Berg standing and you're like taller than the cart so you're look you have to crouch to look at what's in the cart yeah and there's like a yeah, like... big big metal bowl and there's an old man uh and he's he's got like a, a big bowl with like some noodles and like green onion and sh- probably shrimp uh and he's <sighs> he's got it all he's got it all mixed up for you and um yeah and so he's you you bring your own bowl so he's like scooping it into this bowl and you've, you've just bought some some noodles from him and you're you're maybe like holding the the chopsticks in your hand about to dig in and then yeah you notice this this unusual colored smoke kind of rising from the the outside of the city yeah i know to say that i'm eating noodles so you can just describe ramen and think about (laughs) yeah it's really more it's really more pad thai than it is ramen i was Um, gonna say it doesn't seem like it would actually be noodles yeah they got those big they got those big ass river those big ass river shrimp Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Crayfish on there, maybe from the uh-huh. caves. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. A little tamarind, mm, tasty. So, uh, yeah. So you're like just about to eat, and you're like, wait a second, and you look over, and you, yeah, you see the. Yeah. Um. So burgers and just getting the last bit and stuff, just eating it very quickly, probably quicker than this guy's seen people eat food in a while. <laughs> <laughs> right. The, the whole bowl, you're just like, ow. Like he has, he hasn't even you know? yeah moved from the stand. Like he just handed it to him and he probably mm-hmm. squinting mm-hmm. at me like, it's so hot. How are you? 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. How does how how many how many uh how many chili peppers worth of spicy does Berg like his his uh Court of Swords noodles? Berg likes pretty, are you a five pretty, are you a five chili peppers kind of guy? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nice. Berg's endured cool. a lot of things, all right? Spice ain't no shit to him. That's right. Berg <laughs> likes it. Berg likes it green people spicy. Okay, cool. So uh yeah, and he just looks up at you like, whoa, you say that whole thing in one go. And then you just you walk off. Yeah, Berg looks at him like Good soup. Thank you. And he he nods and says, "Please come back, but bring your friends." Like waves to you as you as you leave. Yeah, Berg, yeah. Uh, like to to you, the bowl is like a like a teacup, right? Yeah, it's like, like a little thing. thing. <laughs> it's an mm-hmm. appetizer. Okay. Yeah, and if um, I'm trying to decide whether or not Berg would would go stop off it where they've been staying to grab his stuff really quickly um or if he would be in full right because Berg, be in full. yeah you the the city the city is like dangerous but it's normal person dangerous not dungeons and dragons player character dangerous exactly so right. like you probably get by just on attitude most of the time anybody who would think to rob someone would be like human human berg old person well clearly yeah. like Nobody's gonna give you shit. You get a lot of dirty looks, but yeah, yeah. No, I, I don't think you have to walk around like armed, wearing your armor and stuff. He's probably stopping then back to uh, the the place they've been residing in uh, to grab his stuff before heading out towards the uh, the campfire. Right, in case they need in case they need help. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, that sounds good. All right. Um. So you uh you head uh, you head out and uh, and I think that that's. That's probably that's probably the scene, right? And that's probably that'll end us for our break, and we can come back, and all of you can reunite at the at the camp that they have set up just outside the uh, outside the city. Cool, cool. All right. God, I miss that boys. Bird trips over a rock. <laughs> how big of a rock and how bad of a fall is it? Find out after the break. We'll figure it out <laughs> in about five or six minutes. Unless you're on YouTube, then it's probably forty eight hours. So uh, we're gonna take our break, though. Be right back with more Court of Swords right after this here on episode ninety four. We'll see you in just a bit.